Welcome to Burke. Today, we're gonna to go through some script basics. So if you go to your build section, pull on out that script block, and let's go inside. The first thing you're gonna see is the events tab. This is like when the world is started, then let's do something. So this defines when do you want something to happen. So when the world started, when a player has entered a trigger, or when an object enters a trigger, when the player enters the world or leaves the world. Lots of options here, but we'll get into that later. The next tab is our motion tab. This is when you can move things, you can move objects, you can move over time, you can respawn the player. A lot of other great options here as well. And up next we have our actions tab. So this is like hiding and showing object. This is setting gravity off or on. This is the ability to show text, animation, play sound, play visual effects. Really cool stuff here. Our next tab is our operations tab. Our operations tab is like math. This is how you can calculate certain things. The most important things in here are like position of object, rotation of object. You can also scroll down and get that for players as well. Operations are very, very powerful. Next up we have our values tab. For values, you can set a variable to be something like the position of a player. You can set the player's persistent variable or get their variable. You can also grab just plain old numbers, booleans, vectors, strings, colors. And then our last tab is the variables tab. This is where you can create variables. So if you click the drop down, you can see you've got numbers, booleans, object, players, ID. We have vector, rotation, color, and string. A lot of really cool stuff here. So the first thing we should do is let's go ahead and create an object called respawn point. And so we're gonna create the first script you should ever create, which is when trigger is entered by player. You don't need when world is started, so you can pull and delete that. And then if you go to the motion tab, grab respawn player, and then grab your duplicate tool and pull player down from here. So now when the trigger is entered with a player, then we're going to respawn the player, not on self, but on that respawn point. That's an object variable we just created. Let's go name it respawn. We need a trigger and we're gonna need a respawn point. Now in this case, we've already got a spawn point. So let's grab our trigger and come on over here. Let's grab this, attach the script respawn lakes, and then go into our spawn point properties, grab this little doohickey here, and attach that into our script. You'll now see that it says respawn point is a spawn point. So we know this object is now a spawn point. We can now set it up so that if someone falls down here in the water, they're gonna get respawned. We're just gonna fill this whole area in. And similarly, if you have a world you really wanna have it set so that if a player falls off the world, they're not trapped down here. All right, so we've lowered the trigger so that way it's as low to the water as we can get it. And now if we come in as a player and we jump off of here, when we hit the water, we get respawned back up here. So now no players are gonna get trapped down there. Normally you'd wanna put a trigger like this below your world so that if someone falls off, now in this case, since people are gonna be flying dragons, we don't want them flying through this and getting uh, respawned. So I'm gonna delete this and that's why we're just doing it on the water. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And in the next one, we're gonna go into a deep dive of all the different types of events. I'll see you there. Bye.